Hey guys, we're working on the M130 Mercedes engine. This engine is in lots of different Mercedes, the Pagoda, the W108, W109. In today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to set this fuel injection pump so it does what it's supposed to do. And not only that, I'm gonna show you how to set yours by year, all by yourself. The trick to setting these is to understand how it works. So I'll show you exactly how it works. It's actually pretty simple to set it, way simpler than any books ever explained it or anything. Let's get started right away. And guys, I mean, if you're working on any kind of mechanical fuel injection pump, diesel, any other Mercedes uh, engines, it's all very, very similar. You're gonna learn a lot from this video, so watch it anyways. Okay, the first thing you're gonna need to do this, and you absolutely need this, is an RPM gauge, so we have like a universal one. I got this from uh, eBay. I think it was like 30 bucks or something. Works great. So you hook up one to the negative and one right there to the coil, right? And then here it says six cylinder. So that's the gauge we will follow. Pretty straightforward, guys. You put on RPM. So you have to have one to set this right. Okay, the second thing is make sure your timing is set correctly. Uh, this really can't be done with the timing not set right. So I will have a timing video that shows you exactly how to set the timing. And I even get inside of the distributor into the whole mechanical system with the springs and that, not just the timing advance. So make sure you subscribe for that reason. Okay, so let's say your timing set good, which ours is. The next thing you gotta do is make sure your, all your rods are set right. So starting at the throttle body, see this has to just kind of stick. That's how you put it back. See how it just kind of sticks. Okay, so then this uh, thing here, if you have an automatic transmission, right? What this does is when you put it in drive, it revs it up a bit, right? Like that. So this just has to sit here without it actually doing anything, which is what it is. Um, and then this rod here, so basically what you do is you make it so it's not pushing down at all. So you would like unscrew this, right? And make sure it's all the way to the top when you screw this back together. So that's how you set these rods. I know I'm kind of zipping through this because this video is about setting this guy up. So bear with me guys. So just quickly back to this. So let's say I was gonna disconnect this rod, right? You want it to be basically like completely in up position when you attach it to this, when the car is just idling in neutral and if it's automatic, you know, in park or in neutral. Okay, so this fuel injector pump um, we're gonna cover basically three things in it. We're gonna cover up this whole warm-up uh, device here with this. Uh, and then there's an adjuster at the end where, where you screw it in, it gives you more fuel and less fuel. So we're gonna co uh, cover all that at idle speeds, guys. Okay, so this whole entire warm-up device here has basically two functions. One function, what it does is when the engine is cold, it... Um, gives it more fuel and it opens up, this is a little air filter, and it opens up like a valve inside, which then allows more air to go in, which travels through this tube, and it actually goes all the way to the uh, uh, throttle body there, right? So that's the two functions that it has. And then as it warms up, there's like, like a pin in this thing, right? And it starts to push um, the valve down, that shuts the air off here. So then it starts getting less air. And also what it does is when the car's hot inside of the fuel injector pump, it pushes uh, this other valve or whatever you wanna call it. And it makes it so the engine starts getting less fuel because the, the warmer your engine is, the less fuel it needs. And the colder it is, the more fuel it needs. So that's what that controls. And the other thing it controls is like when your engine is cold and you start your car up, right? You want it to rev around a thousand RPMs, right? When it's idling, when it's cold, and then as it warms up, it should idle down to about 750 RPMs, depending on automatic or, or manual. Some are 800, some are 700, but 750 is good. So that's how that works, is as it's warming up, it shuts that one valve off so it gets less air and then it idles it down because it's also getting less fuel. Hope I'm explaining that good, Will. What we're gonna do right now is start the car and I'll show you the problem with this one. So everything seems to be running good. The only problem is when we start it, the warm-up procedure doesn't work. Let's start it. Okay, so the car is ice cold 
and see it just it just sits there at six seven you know 800 rpms right off the bat so the first thing you want to do is unscrew this thing here see so it's kind of working when it's cold it should be sucking air But the problem is, it's just not sucking enough. So we're gonna address that. Okay, I turned it off. So yeah, as it as it warms up, it's supposed to idle down. And it doesn't because it's not getting enough air. Okay, so now we're gonna remove this whole setup. So what you wanna do, guys, is you wanna disconnect this top hose first, move it aside. Some coolant will come out, but not much. And then you wanna disconnect the other hose. And then we're gonna unscrew these two screws and that one and that other one and this one here and we're like we're literally going to pull this whole entire thing out and i'm going to explain to you how it works and what it does okay so we disconnected the hoses i just wanted to show you how to get this off so i mean you might have to spray wd-40 on these you know get them all uh, juicy and stuff but you just use a big honk and screwdriver and they do come out guys so that's what you got to do so you want to loosen all four first like in the car you don't want to be trying to do this later on a bench so you loosen them all okay so i'm gonna loosen all four and pull this thing right out of here okay guys we got it off so i took a rag i wiped everything i wiped inside best i could so uh just it's all gonna make sense bear with me here guys so right now the car would be getting a lot of fuel if you started it right and as it warms up see this part here watch look inside see it presses so the more, see, the more it presses in, the less fuel it's getting. Lots of fuel, less fuel. Get it? So that would be getting lots of fuel going to the cylinders. And then it less, less, less. The more it presses, the less it gets. And this works together with that little screw on the back. Let me get the phone in there and show you. See, guys, right there, that little adjustment screw. When you screw that in, the car gets more fuel so it becomes richer and when you screw it out it becomes leaner less fuel so there it is right under there uh just so you can see see that's where it is and just so everybody knows you're only allowed to turn it three notches at a time you have to basically uh put it in turn it like one two three let it go and then you have to start the car and let it run for you know 30 seconds and then shut it off and then you can turn it three more you can't just turn it like six six clicks anyways let's get back to the stuff that we pulled off guys okay so there's two ways to adjust this at the bottom here there's two washers so these are two adjusting washers so we're going to put these here um, and then let's take this part out so i'm going to take that out right now okay guys let's open this up and get to the heat sensor inside so this is the little mechanism that uh basically decides uh where you know how far the rod goes down depending on temperature so let me just open this up and show you what that looks like so there it is that's your heat sensor this is what makes this thing work okay we laid everything out cleaned everything up so i'll show you how this works now right so this sits inside of there and it's pushed on hard enough where the fluid can't come out, right? So then, you know, fluid goes in, it travels like through there. See, it's just a hole inside and it tr the hot water is around this thing. And what happens is when this gets hot, right, this little rod starts to come out. So like the hotter the engine gets, the more it comes out. So when it's cold, it's there. But then when it's hot, see, it comes out cold hot make sense okay so that's how that sits in the car right so let's pull this apart and i'll show you quickly how this works so that comes off see this is just an air filter so basically to test this all you got to do is if air comes out the, the sides here then it's good you can replace this for like 15 bucks no big deal Okay, so now that you understand all that, see there's a rod down here, so that goes in, right? So let's say that's like this, so you put this in. So that's your 
you're basically your cold setting. So the less this rod pushes inside of right here on the fuel pump, right? The less it pushes, the more fuel the car is getting, the more it pushes, then it starts to get less fuel as it's warming up. So just once again, right? As soon as this thing gets hot, this little rod will come out more because everything will get pushed down. So that's function one of this thing. Um, so that part we had no issues with, everything worked fine. The problem we're having an issue with is that this part, right? So air goes in here, or sorry, air goes in through here, and then this goes into your throttle body, see right through this hose right here, and then it, the car is getting more air, which makes it idle quicker, because it's also getting more fuel when it's cold because that thing's not being pressed makes sense so that's why it will idle faster when the engine is cold so the second function of this right so inside of here see this thing the second you put it in see it just it pushes there's a valve inside of here that closes this it pushes it in too much right off the bat see what i mean uh and this closes let me let me show you Okay, so blowing on this, see it's already restricted. See, watch when I when I lift this thing up. See how much more comes out? Once again. So what we need to do is we need to bring uh, this whole entire setup up about that much. See? Like the inside part in order for it to, to be more open when the engine's cold. Anyways, okay, so I'll show you how to do that. Okay, here's a picture of this whole setup, right, that we're working on. See, so right here is compensating washers, so you can lift this whole entire contraction, right, up or down by adding washers. And what that will do is that will change where this is pressing, how far it's going in, more fuel, less fuel, remember? And the second set of washers, and I mean, feel free to pause the video and take a good look at this thing. But the second set of washers is right here, see? And what that does is, if you put more washers here, then this will be pressed more. See, the more you press this valve here, uh, if you press it more, it closes it if you press it less it opens it so ours is right off the bat the second we put the heat sensor in it's being pressed too much even when it's cold so what we need to do is we need to remove a washer or two right so we can bring this whole thing up make sense okay so see right inside of here see there's a couple little washers as you can see those are the adjustment washers. So what we need to do is see there's a spring here. So we need to get this spring out. It's good to do this on a table. You don't want to lose anything. So you get the spring out. It's like a locking spring for those washers, right? Okay, I'm going to get that out right now. Okay, I got the spring out. Now inside of here, as you can see, there's a couple washers. There they are. Okay, so now with no washers at all, we're going to put this in and try it. See, so what that does now is everything's up a little higher, including this part. So it's going to get more fuel as well, which we can correct that as well. So don't worry about that. But inside of here, let's blow in it and see what happens. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's blowing full out. There's zero restrictions now. See, with this all the way in zero restrictions so we're gonna try add, i'm gonna show you how many washers there was okay so these are the washers that were in here and i can already tell you somebody was goofing around here at some point um see these are the original ones i can tell by the size of them and the feel of them and this somebody just added a washer in there trying to get more fuel they didn't know what they were doing and by doing that they actually messed up the the, the startup uh you know the warm-up procedure of the car so we're gonna eliminate this one washer and we're gonna just put in the two that's quite a bit of thickness see look it's as thick as the two so let's let's put these in and let's try it with just the two 
and blow into it. So that should be perfect. Okay, so we got it together and like see this kind of comes out so don't be scared that's what it's supposed to do because it'll just push up against the uh, fuel injection pump. Okay, let's blow into it now. Okay, so it's definitely a lot better. It's getting restricted a tiny bit still. So with this maximum in, I think I'm gonna try to pull out one more of maybe the skinny washer. Okay, let's pull these back out. So there's two in there. One is really, really, really skinny, see it? So I'm gonna pull the super skinny one out and try it with just this black one. Okay, let's blow into it. Okay, it's pretty good. I mean, when you pull this up a little bit, it does blow a little bit more. So that's where it's gotta be. You can't just have it like completely opened because then what ends up happening is when this thing pushes it down, right? It doesn't give it enough to actually close it. So then even when the car is running and it's hot, it's still getting air. So it's gotta be a little bit pressed in. You get what I'm saying? Just a little bit like, but it's blowing really good. Like it's basically almost full out. No, no restriction, maybe a tiny bit. So I'm gonna leave it at that. So that's where I'm gonna set up the top. So now what you gotta do guys is do not lose this little tiny little factory washer guys. Basically you wanna put in an envelope, write down what it's for and keep it forever. Because first of all, we might even have to add this still. We'll see once we set everything up in the car because unfortunately to set all this up, you're gonna have to warm up the car and it takes a few times to get it down okay so i'm gonna save this thing at a good place we're gonna put the little uh spring back in right in there so that washer is locked in so i'm gonna do that right now there's like a little groove see for it so that goes into the groove i'll do that right now okay so we got that in so this thing is basically good now um okay so now let me show you another problem see why this even gets out of whack sometimes so see this sensor here this heat sensor see the problem is guys replace these with new ones so this is the old original mercedes one let me show you a new one that i bought here straight out of the box let me pull it out so here it is a brand new one right so it's cold it's pushed in all the way so now see they are different a little bit and this is where all the problems start so let me show you when we take this one right and push it in see the way it sits this sticks out that much right so let's leave that just the way it is and now let's put in this new one see it's like got a different shape here so it doesn't quite fit onto there the way the other one does it almost kind of goes on flat so watch what happens when i put this new one in Okay, so that's in all the way, right? So look at this. See, it moved. It moved that much in. So it changes everything now. So basically that valve inside just went up and this went up. So the car's gonna be getting um, more fuel as it's running and this thing's gonna open even more. So I mean, could you use one of these new ones? Yeah, of course you could, but you would have to take your original one, you know, like we got it set up good right now, right? You would have to do this, and then you would take your new one, right? Put it in, and the amount that this goes in, see that much? You would need to add a washer that thickness, get it? To make up for that. I hope I'm explaining this good, guys. And then it would work, right? So you, so you can use these, but a lot of times guys don't realize they just put this on and then everything's out of whack. Now your car is running richer and you know, this isn't, when, it, when this goes all the way down, it's still getting uh, air through here and maybe it's getting too much air or whatever. So 
that's the problem with some of these new ones. You have to really, really pay attention, guys. But we're going to run the original one because it works. We got this all figured out. Okay, so now you understand the top part of this whole setup. Now we're going to talk about the bottom part that presses into the fuel pump. Okay, so we got this together, basically, the top part of it. We're going to tighten these a little bit more once it's in the car, just so it's nice and sturdy. So we got the top part done. It's set up. Now we're going to talk about the bottom part. Okay, so remember before when I talked about the more this is pressed, right, the less fuel the car gets. So like as it's warming up, right, less, less, less. And then it reaches a point where it's pressed maximum and then it gets X amount of fuel, whatever, whatever it is, right? So you can adjust that with that little screw I showed you earlier. The more you screw it in, the more fuel it gets the less you screw it out, uh, the less fuel it gets, right? Um, and this is all like 1500 RPMs and less. That's, that's where all these settings come into play. They're basically like idle speed settings. The other settings, like while the car is running, uh, like while you're driving on the highway, there's two other adjustments for that, which you should never touch. So hopefully nobody ever touched those in your car. They're like inside the fuel pump hidden. I'll show you right now see right here here is the full load screw and here is the uh, uh low range right so like i said guys do not touch these and if you happen to like decide you want to do this you have to literally write down every single turn that you do on a piece of paper so you can undo the damage you're about to do so don't play around with these at all guys these you, you should never ever ever touch those okay that's not what we're covering in this video okay guys so now we're moving on to this part right so as the car is cold so this is going to sit on top of that fuel injection pump right so think about what we did in here since we took out a pretty thick washer inside of this this whole contraption right see this is how this sat in there with uh these two washers right so this whole entire contraption now is going to sit the same, but this thing is going to be the thickness of that washer higher, which means the car is going to be getting more fuel, right? And then as it heats up and it starts coming out and it's at its maximum out, out right? So let's say it's right there. It's going to be the thickness of the washer less pressing, right? Like, you know, if it was going to be here, now it's going to be here, right? Because that, that washer is not there anymore. So, I mean, this is what you could do, is you could remove these two washers, right? So now that those are removed, this whole entire contraption is gonna sit a little bit lower, right? Which means this is gonna press the same amount again as it did before, you get what I'm saying? So that's what these bottom washers are for. They're to fine tune how much fuel you're getting. See, the top washer uh, is to adjust this thing, right? Open and close. That's what the top washers do. And the bottom washers give you more fuel. Like if you put more washers, you're gonna get more fuel. If you take the washers away, now you're gonna get less fuel because this whole thing is uh, lower. And then the more you push, the less fuel you get. Make sense? Okay, so in our case, since that washer that was in here, right, uh, the compensating washer wasn't supposed to be in there. Somebody put it in at some point. Uh, what we're going to do is like, you know, normally you would just take these away and that would make up the difference. But in our case, I'm still going to run these. And like I said, we can fine tune it inside of on the pump with that little turny thing. I'll show you how to do all that. It's very, very simple. So I'm basically going to put these two washers on and I'm going to put all this back together and run it as is. So I'm gonna go put this on right now. And one thing I forgot to mention, guys, when we had this all apart, so so that whole valve inside that moves in that, make sure it moves freely. And if it doesn't, you can get some like bearing grease and you can put it in there and get everything moving good. It's gotta be like uh, super easy moving. So ours was moving super good and it was already full of grease. So I just uh, didn't do that or mention that, but yours could be seized. That could be also another problem. Okay, I'm gonna go put all this together. Off camera, guys, there's no point to show that part. Okay, guys, we got it on 
uh, you know, all the hoses are tight, everything's good. So now we have to put in some antifreeze, just the amount, like we're gonna top it up because a lot came out due to, uh, you know, us disconnecting the hoses. So we're gonna top it up, guys. And also, I wanna point something out to you guys. While this is all going on, I would like to promote myself really quick, so bear with me. So I have a whole entire series. I'm talking, this is like a real show. I tried to make it as much as a real show as I could about this 1969 Corvette Stingray. Basically, it's been sitting for 20 years. Everything was broken on it. So I have about 25 episodes now where I restore this thing episode by episode, guys. I mean, the interior's back in, everything's fixed. I worked on the motor, uh, vacuum systems, lights, electrical harnesses, everything. It's honestly a great, great show. If you could just do me the favor and in the description below, there will be a link to this awesome homemade show by a regular guy just like you. I literally tried to make it as best as I could as a real show. The only thing about those car shows on TV I don't like is that there's all this fake drama, brothers fighting with you know sisters and dads and stuff i don't have any of that my show actually shows every single step of restoring a car i don't skip nothing it's super super good give it a chance hit on the link and at the end of this video in the corner there'll be a link to the whole entire 25 episode series so give it a shot please that's all i ask of you okay let's get back into it okay guys we're about to start it let's see what happens Okay guys, well right off the bat, there it is, she's at just over a thousand, seems to be working, sucking air like crazy, it should almost stall, that definitely made a huge difference guys, okay what we got to do now guys is we got to get this thing to full out operating temperature. To set the fuel system okay guys she's been running for maybe four minutes and look at that it already dropped to uh 800 see so it's definitely working um over here see if we plug this now it still idles down just a bit because it's not fully warm yet it's pretty much getting there though so it's definitely doing what it's supposed to be doing Let's give it another 10 minutes, guys. And also I'll tell you another reason why you should subscribe. So a radiator for one of these guys is about $1,500, or you can get your old one record for about five, 600 bucks, right? Well, I found a suitable replacement radiator out of a different Mercedes. Check it out, guys. Just a regular aluminum and plastic radiator. Fits in here perfectly, guys. So what I'll do is I will put a link in the description as well to that video when it comes out. I haven't quite made it yet, but it's coming out. And that radiator only cost me $100 and it works super good. Cools the car like you wouldn't believe, guys. So that's another reason why you should subscribe. Okay, she's fully warmed up. Uh, we even took it for a drive. So the first thing you want to do is get the RPMs to about 700, uh, 750, right? So what you're going to do is you're gonna turn this thing in a little bit. See, as you turn it in, the RPMs are dropping, see? There you go, perfect. See right there, 750. Okay, now we're gonna shut the car off. Okay guys, so on the back of this thing, I'm gonna show you one more time, I'm gonna get the phone in there, right? So, See right there, this is your little adjuster. Okay, so what you have to do with that, with the engine off, the engine has to be off. You grab it and you kind of push it in and, and you're feeling around. There's like these two notches it goes into. So you're spinning it, spinning it, and then it'll like lock in, you'll feel it. So you push it into the notches and then you're able to turn it three turns, like three clicks, like click, click, click. So that's what you gotta start doing. We're going to try to turn it back as much as we can to take away fuel, okay? So you're going to turn it back three notches. That's what I'm going to do right now. Not too sure if you can see this good, but see, you push it in, you spin it. There, it's locked in. Then you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three. Three notches back. Okay, and then you start the car again. So now the car is getting a little bit less fuel at idle when it's fully hot uh, than it was a second ago. Okay, so now, same thing. We're gonna try to bring this to seven, 750. So let's slow it down by turning that, that knob. So we're gonna turn that in a little bit. There you go. Okay, so now uh, we're gonna turn it off again. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put our hand in there, push that thing in. There you go. One, two, three back. So now it's getting less fuel again. Okay, now we start the car. Okay, so the RPMs dropped a little bit. Um, so now we're gonna add a little bit more air to get it to 750 again. I took some away, now I'm adding some. There we go. So that's that. Okay, now we turn the car off again. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna put our hand in there and we're gonna go three back again. One, two, three. Okay. Okay guys, just before we go on any further, right? So this is the thing we're turning right here. So this thing has about 72 turns in it, get it? So you can, if you turn it all the way in, eventually it will stop, right? So once you're at the end and it stops, like when you're turning it in to give it more fuel, um, you have about 72 turns uh, counterclockwise to make it leaner before it stops on the other side, right? So your goal is to kind of have it in the middle of the 72, right? Uh, it doesn't have to be perfectly in the middle, but you get what I'm saying? I hope I'm making this clear. So if you turn it in all the way and then you turn it out all the way, uh, it has about 72 turns in it. You can only turn it three turns at a time. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're slowly turning it out to try to, to try to get it lean to the point where the car basically starts to stall. Where like I can't do the 750 RPMs. Okay, so that's what we're doing. But what could happen is you could keep turning it where you get to the end and then there's not enough turns left where you can make the car stall out. So if that happens, what you have to do is you have to turn it back in to about the middle, right? So if you take it all the way out and the car's still running, then what you wanna do is you wanna put it back in, you wanna screw it back in 36 turns. That way you'll be right in the middle, right? Um, 36 turns, but you have to turn it three times in, start the car, uh, you know, rev it, turn the car off, turn it three more in, start the car, rev it, turn it off, turn it three more in, rev it. Like that's what you have to do, right? Until you, you're, you're 30 uh, whatever turns in. So you're about halfway, right? So that's only if, if you turn it back and the thing happens where it's still running perfect and you can't go back anymore. So then what you do is remember those two washers? See these washers down here? the ones in between the fuel injection pump and this whole contraption, right? So then what you have to do, guys, is, like, let's say you're all the way back, right? And the car's still running mint. Um, so then you, you put it in 36 turns in, right? So now what you have to do is you would take these two washers away. So you would have to take this whole contraption off, right? Take the two washers away put the whole contraption back on. And will that, what that will do is it'll make this thing push it in more, right? Which would in turn give it less fuel. Get it? Because it, the further this pushes in, the less fuel the car gets, right? So now it changes. That whole thing that you turn in and out, it, it changes like the position of it. So now, now you're in the middle, get it? and it might already be lean. 
I hope I'm making sense here. So then you would start playing the same game. You would slowly start turning it out three at a time until you can't, no matter where you put the air screw, right? Um, it just can't get 750 RPMs. So, okay, let's continue with ours and see how it goes. Okay, we restarted it. Let's see if we can get the RPMs to drop. Okay, let's turn it off. Okay, and we're gonna go three more back again. We're gonna keep doing that. One, two, three. Okay, let's restart it. Okay, so we're at uh, 700. Let's give it more air. Okay, let's turn it off. We're getting close. I can already feel it. Okay, so we're going to go three more back. Less fuel again. One, two, three. Okay. Okay, guys, I believe we have reached the spot. Okay, so now it's revving at 700. I can hear that it's misfiring, so it's probably not getting enough fuel. Let's try to give it more air and see what happens. Ready? Yeah, so I'm giving it more air. See, it doesn't matter how much air I give it, it's not revving up anymore. Reason for that is because now it doesn't have enough fuel. So you can give it all the air you want and it's getting more air, but not enough fuel. So that's the spot that you want to get to. Okay, I know I'm maybe over explaining this, but this was how you will understand it. So, right, we took a washer away, a pretty thick one right here. So what that, that, what that did is it brought this whole entire contraption up, right? Which means now the car is getting more fuel, right? So what we did is we were unscrewing that thing to give it less fuel again. It totally worked if you think about it, right? If, like I said, if we got all the way to the end, we would remove those washers and screw back in remove those washers and then do the same thing again. But now we're at a point where we know we know exactly where we are as far as uh, fuel, where we're at with the fuel. So taking that one little washer away, we have to turn it back probably about 18 spins or whatever, 17, uh, to get it, you know, to the point where it's basically got the minimum amount of fuel it can have before it stalls. Okay, guys. So now from that point, right, where it's, where no matter how you turn the air thing, you can't get it to 750 RPMs, right? So from that point, what you wanna do is you wanna turn that thing in about 12 turns. 12 turns in should get you about right as far as fuel and air goes. So in order to do that, you have to turn it three in, start the car, turn it off. Three in, start the car, turn it off. Three in, start the car, turn it off. Three in, start the, you know, you get what I'm saying? Until you get 12 turns in. So I'm gonna do that right now, guys, off camera. So make sure, make sure you keep track. Even like get a piece of paper and write all this down. So then you know, like let's say you go, you go driving around and uh, you think you're getting too much fuel. Like you have to keep track of it from that point. I'll explain it later. So we're gonna basically write down on a piece of paper that from the stalling point, we're 12 turns in on the back of the fuel injection pump. Okay, guys, we turned it in 12 times. So now what you want to do is this air screw here, right? We're going to turn it out. You're going to give it more air. You want to get this up to 750. There we go. That's perfect right there, guys. So basically she's set now. Runs great. Okay, so another test you can do, just so you know, is let's say you start unscrewing that and you just keep unscrewing it right till the end, right? So this here, watch, I'm gonna keep unscrewing it.
That's about the most it should go up. Get it? Now it doesn't matter how much I turn it. It's not gonna go up anymore. Like you don't turn it out. Okay. And that's where you want it guys. So that's how you set it. And one more thing I wanna show you guys. Okay guys, so now back to this whole thing right here, right? So the way this, this works is at full hot operating temperature, if you put your, like this isn't sucking anymore. Like if you put your fingers across it, there's no suction. But if you plug it with your finger, it will suck on your finger. See, there's always a little bit of suction in it, but it shouldn't change the RPMs. See what I mean? And if it does change them, it should be like almost nothing. So that's good right there, but there's no suction, right? When it's cold, this thing will suck like crazy. Okay, I shut the car off. So yeah, like if, if this thing's still sucking, like and you can hear it, then what you would have to do, guys, is you would need to take this all apart again, right? And you would need to add a washer, get it? Because every time you add a washer, it pushes the valve more down. So then when the car heats up, it, it closes this thing, right? Um, hope I'm making sense to you guys here. But in our case, it's good. Like you said, it, it does grab my finger. The car basically doesn't idle down at all. Um, when it's fully fully hot okay and then the absolute last test guys is you have to let the car completely cool down now everything's set up right and with it completely cold when you look at the rpm gauge you know it should be running at around a thousand maybe 11 maybe like nine and a half would be acceptable then that means that that is doing its job you get what i'm saying so that's how you test that. So what we're gonna do now, guys, is we're gonna let this car completely 100% cool down and we're gonna do that test. And if, for example, it doesn't do that, like let's say it just stays at like 800, it went from 750 to 800, that's not enough. So then what you would have to do, guys, is take it all apart, right? And you would have to remove a washer so that valve can go higher when it's cold. Um, all right, that's the best I can explain all of this, guys. Um, so, yeah, let's wait until she cools down. We're going to give it a good solid two hours. There it is. Beautiful car, by the way. Love it. I got a van with some flames. Got lots of videos about that, too. Okay, I'll see you in two hours. Okay, guys, just while we're waiting here. So what you would do is you would drive your car like that for about one year. And then in a year, you pull out your spark plugs. So if your spark plug looks like this one, see, it's like got the white on it. That means your car is running lean, not enough fuel. So then what you would do is you would, uh, on the fuel injector pump, right, you would turn it in like one, two, three. Um, and then, you know, bring up your air or whatever to get it to 750 RPMs. And then that'll bring it up a little bit. And then you could, you know, try again in a year, look at your plugs. But that's, that tells you that it's running lean. Your plug should look roughly like this. I hope you can see that good. So that means it's running good. It's everything's fine, right? And if it's got like oily stuff on it and gunk and that, then you're running too rich. So then you would just go like three back, you know, and then try it again in a year. Unfortunately, that's the only way you can tell, but uh, that's pretty good setting. I've had this car for, seven years now and i've played around with all of this you know and uh i got it all packed out I, I drive this car lots like it's basically like my grocery getter i drive it everywhere i never have any issues with it it's a great great car just while we're waiting i'm trying to get subscribers here so these cars are notorious for uh, having problems starting so there will also be an episode where i show you what i did to this one i never have problems with it starting it starts always 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 i'll explain to you there's like a fuel injector there that injects gas directly into this to make it start uh there is like a system that controls it at certain temperatures i'll explain all that in that video and i'll show you what i did to bypass that 
See, I just created a little button so I can have it shooting gas whenever I want. So make sure you subscribe. So make sure you put this filter back on, obviously, and, um, you know, check for leaks around everything once, once you're up and running. Okay, guys, so it's been hours and hours later. Um, she's ice cold. Let's start it and see if the RPMs are the way they should be. Okay, guys, there we go. We're at 1,000 RPMs, just the way we should be, guys. So everything's working. So now as it warms up, it's gonna drop down to 750, guys. Everything is working just the way it should. Okay, I'm grabbing the kids and let's go for a cruise. Subscribe to Promo Summer Garage. And hit that like button or you grow up a thousand years of bad luck. And make sure to hit that big subscribe button. And if we have a bell, hit it. Alright, let's do it, boys and girls. Subscribe.